Hi there. Welcome. My name is Laura. Today, two horse show judges will be giving you some insider secrets to improving your riding position. Stay tuned for reviewing your horse riding position and some other very good information. I hope it doesn't get too messy. So let's get started. Hi there and welcome. My name is Laura. Welcome to the Equestrian Skill Builders live broadcast where we discuss equestrian related topics and share ideas and exercises to help you and or your riders. If you'd like to improve your riding and training and win more ribbons at your next horse show or generally like other horsey related stuff, then stay tuned because my co-host Patricia Jellerson. Hi Patricia. Hi. USEF Large R Judge, and I will be sharing some excellent information to help you improve your performance and answer your burning questions that you have about your equitation or your horse. <laughs> uh, regular viewers of the program will recognize USEF Large R Judge Patricia Jellerson. Hi, Patricia. How are you doing Hi. today? Welcome, everybody. Where are you coming in from? Edmond, Oklahoma, which is north of Oklahoma City, land of the cowboys. <laughs> and they all dress so sharp. They love their um, pressed jeans with the crease down the middle. Oh. That is definitely a thing among the cowboys. And, of course, the boots and the hat. Yeah, there are a lot of them around here. Well, last week you said you had some snow. What's it like this week? Oh, my gosh. This week it's just cold. No more snow. But we did have two little snowfalls, which is, you know, like five or six inches, which is unusual for us. How about you? What's going well, on? Well, it's, it's snowing. They've got a snow alert on right now. And oh. we're in the middle. I'd like to take my camera out there to show you. Yeah. I'll do that a little later. But, um, yeah, so it is snowing. It's snowing. Which is good. We like it. But it's warm. It's just around freezing. Oh. And I'm coming from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. So, and, and my name is Laura, Laura Kellame. I help people improve the riding and training and understanding of their horses by providing hands-on and now virtual training to produce educated thinking horse people. Check out my website. I'll put it in the comments here. I'll, I'm a competition coach specialist, high performance train, Equestrian Canada, senior judge, hunter jumper, equitation and hack, and a senior steward. And of course, I produce these live programs. So we've already got a comment. Rebecca says, hi. Hi, Rebecca. Laura is the originator and creator yes. of this program. And it started with the COVID and it's just continued on. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So it, that's exactly how. So we're, we're, um, yeah, we've been gone for a while, haven't we, Patricia? Yeah. So Rebecca says, I haven't ridden in so long. I need advice. I've picked out the chestnut gelding on some website as my first horse. Excellent. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Maybe you could send us a picture of him. And also, Charlie's on again. Uh, uh -huh. Hey, Charlie. Thank you for coming back on. I really appreciate Rebecca, it. Do you have a, a trainer you're working with? I hope just because. It always helps to have a second set of eyes when you're looking for a horse and to get a, a backup opinion, either yeah. that or a good friend who's knowledgeable. Right. So that's very good. Uh, that's right. Uh, to take somebody with you or talk with your trainer if you have one or a knowledgeable friend. Exactly right. So we today we've got a, a, somebody sent us a picture for us to review their position and we're going to be t talk, taking that on. Hopefully it doesn't get too messy with some of the comments we have. And if you have comments too, we'd love to hear from them. And uh, I got a very good in, got a very good comment uh, in the email about a rider who has not been riding for a while and getting back into ri riding and some of her trials. And we're going to help her with that. And answering questions from my website, Katie Equestrian put a really good question on the YouTube and some of the upcoming guests. So that's what we're going to be working on. Madeline says, is it too late to send in a video or a picture? I would say you can send something in for next week, uh, Madeline. Yes, please do. Right. Okay. I don't so know, she emails you something. Will you get it in time? 
Yep, we can do that. So yeah, so send a, a picture, Madeline, mm -hmm. send it to thistleridge at hotmail.com. I'm just going to put that up here. Thistleridge at hotmail.com. I'm going to put it on the, as soon as I find it, there it is. That's that one. Thistleridge at hotmail.com. Maybe I can just put that right here right now. Create a banner. I think you should go ahead and tell them about your upcoming guests. You've got some wonderful guests coming on the program. Yes. Uh, thanks, Patricia. Yeah, that's great. So we, I've been so excited. I've got some really good guests coming on next week. So next week I've got a bit fitter coming on. No, not next week. Next week I've got on the 23rd, I've got Crystal Kelly. She is uh, the international equestrian in the international equestrian.com. I'm going to go over these again at the end internationalquestion.com. She is having a virtual summit that I will be speaking on at uh, in the middle of uh, January 26 to 28. I'm going to be speaking at that and she's got a whole lineup of professionals who will be, uh, it's a free virtual online clinic. So yeah. I'm going to be talking about that. And then the following week, that is the 30th of January. We've got a bit fitter coming on. She's going to talk about how to fit your bit and what happens if it's not fitted properly. And then on the 6th, I've got a special guest, Jamie. Jamie, 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 Jamie. What's your last name, Jamie? Jamie Baldanza, Wildlands Wild Horses. I'm going to show the trailer of for this uh, program that she's developed about wildlands, wild horses. I've got the trailer. It's going to show it at the end about uh, saving Mustangs in the U S. So are there wild horses in Canada? Uh, I think that the Shetlands and um, some, yes. Yeah. Island ponies. I really don't know. And Alberta, there's some wild horses in Alberta as well. Oh. Okay, so let's get started with this position review. Okay, we're going to add it. Now, if you're going to send in a picture, please try to send it in in a bigger format. This is a thumbnail off a of video, and it's quite tiny, as you can see. So I tried to make it bigger, but when I make it bigger, it loses some of the of the uh, resilience. It's not bad though. Yeah, it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, Patricia, would you like to get started with that? Sure. I love the way this rider's looking up. She's very focused on what's coming after the jump, which is exactly right. A uh, nice uh, release, a little low for a crest release, maybe up just a hair more. And you can tell her elbows have come out a bit because she's dropping her hands. If she were to raise her hands just a bit, it'd bring those elbows into her side. Nice flat back, I like that. Not too far out of the saddle. Um, her leg does look like it's slipping back though. It, it looks like she's pinching a little with her knee. And I'm thinking the saddle flap looks awful short for her too. That's the saddle flap here, right? I guess maybe not. It just looks like it's, yeah, mm -hmm. it looks like it's right on the saddle flat. Right, right. Which might yep. have something to do with pushing her leg back a little. So where should, that's a really good comment. Where should the saddle flat be? I, I didn't notice that. The saddle, saddle flat, flat should be right below, a little bit below your knee, a couple of inches below your knee, because you don't want it to interfere with the top of your boot. Yeah, so this is just, yeah, it kind of does look that like that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she may want to check her on her saddle a little bit. So you mentioned about her elbows. It looks like they're coming out. Mm -hmm. Don't you think her crest release is just a little low? I, pers I like to have hands right on the neck. Mm-hmm. 
But I'm saying could be an inch or two higher towards the ears, I think, maybe. If you're, you're like going to have a hand here on the neck. Yeah, just a little further up. And that would bring her elbows in. Yeah, to open up her elbows mm -hmm. and push, make the distance between her chest mm -hmm. and the horse's neck. So increase the distance between her chest and her hands. Open mm -hmm. up this distance in here. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And her hands here a little bit more. Right. But I mean, it, she, she's not interfering. I mean. No, no. Uh -uh. She's definitely staying out of the horse's way. Her heels down great, too. She's yeah. got great depth to her heel. Nice, clean boots. Love that. <laughs> And this and is a great have a tank top on. Huh? No, huh? no tank top. No, <laughs> this is a great schooling picture. I mean, clean breeches, clean boots. She's got her gloves on. She's yep. got a nice, neat shirt tucked in with the belt. Yep. It just helps us uh, when you see that. And then, you know, same thing teaching lessons. If riders have too blousy a shirt, uh, it you looks, can't they tell look like this. what they're doing. So this is very nice turnout for a schooling picture. Yes, really good. Uh, th there's lots of things that I like about it too. I like where you said about her eyes looking up, looking forward. That's really good. And, uh, you know, her, I think for me, she's for the size of jump. If you look at the size of the jump, I think that she's too far forward rule of thumb and like the shoulder knee toe uh, her leg is slipped back so i'd like to see her shoulder here hip knee and then her foot like here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do you agree with that patricia yeah yes her shoulders could be up a little more um her definitely that she's pinching a bit with her knee and her leg has slipped back, even yeah. though she's got that great depth to her heel, the leg needs to be forward just a little more. So you've got a base of support right under you. Yeah. So again, another rule of thumb is the front of your boot back at the front of your leg should be near the girth. That's a kind of a rule of thumb. If if you watch somebody and their leg is like this, it means usually means that they're pinching with their knee, mm -hmm. right? Right. And the other thing is to uh, let me just close this. Is that one thing to consider is if you take the horse away from this rider, what is going to happen to this rider? Is she going to land on her feet? Or is she going to tip this way or tip this way? She's going to tip. tip forward. Yeah, she's going to show to me that she's a little off balance because she's going to move. She's going to fall on her face if we took the horse away. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what, uh, what kind of exercises can we do for this to help this rider? Uh, for a rider that tends to pinch with their knees, I really like doing flat work without stirrups. I think that really helps bring your lower leg against the horse. And it's hard to do good work with no stirrups if one particular part of your body is stiff or pinching. So I think that would be a, a very good exercise for her. So work without stirrups. Uh, like, like what exactly does that, do you mean just trotting around Without stirrups on a practice yeah, I ride? Think even if you don't feel comfortable cantering without stirrups, just to be able to do a sitting trot and a posting trot helps a lot. Um, you know, lunge line work is always good, but to me, just being able to ride an arena and tell yourself you're going to practice 15, 20 minutes every time you ride without stirrups goes a, a lot to give you an independent seat, goes far to give you an independent seat and balance, I think. Yeah, that's I, I totally agree with you. And riding without stirrups, uh, even at the walk to help with your balance, mm -hmm. you know, providing your, you know, you want to make sure that your horse is calm and quiet and understands that you are going to be riding without stirrups, because sometimes people grip with their legs when they're riding without stirrups. So if you tend to grip with your legs, then, you know, make sure you're on a quiet horse. 
-hmm. but riding without stirrups gives people the balance and understanding of how their body moves. So this, mm -hmm. this person is, would benefit from riding without stirrups because she's pinching with her knees, right? Right. So right. riding without stirrups would help her lengthen her leg down and get her legs straightened out a bit more and help her to understand where her leg should be and right. develop that kind of educated, uh, educated, educated grip, I guess you can call it. And balance. Yeah. And and because if you're pinching with your knee without stirrups, you're, you're going to have a hard time staying balanced. Absolutely. I mean, you can get away with it with stirrups, very hard without stirrups and then possibly try trotting some poles on the ground without your stirrups in a little bit of a two point that will help a lot as well. Yeah. My favorite exercise is lunging. I love when you said lunging, mm -hmm. I love lunging because we all, you know, we all ride like this. We all, you know, when, when we are a little uncomfortable, a little afraid, we pinch with our knees because that's going to help us stay on the horse. And you can't tell me if you're going cross country or hunting or getting un unseated, unbalanced, you're not going to pinch with your knees, right? So right. everybody seems to pinch with their knees. Uh, well, at least I do. But what I like to do is to lunge people. And this is what I've done is lunge people and do exercises, even at the halt and the walk to help you, you mentioned independent seat. So to get an independent mm -hmm. seat, to sit up, lift one leg off the saddle and then put it back down again, lift the other leg off the saddle, put it back down again. It doesn't have to be a lot, just like lift it off to the side an inch right. so you're not gripping, gripping right? Have right. you done that? You had a good point. Even at the walk helps, you know, challenge yourself, do things out of your comfort zone, but start start at, at where you're not over facing yourself, you know, even to do some of the, these things at the walk, right. It's a wonderful exercise to be able to do them at the trot will get you very far. Even if you don't feel comfortable cantering the walk and the trot will still help quite a lot. And a halt, even at the oh, halt, yes. sitting and at the halt yes. and uh, lift one leg off and then the mm -hmm. other leg off. I, and, and I don't mean, you know, I mean, no, no. keeping your body still and just lift your knee off to the side, mm -hmm. a, a, an inch off the saddle in the correct riding position, even. Mm -hmm. I mean, th there's lots of exercises you can do. And uh, I would encourage you to look at them. I think I might even have a video on YouTube on some of the exercises that I do. And you know what, I wouldn't ask you to do this unless I do it because I do this too. I mm -hmm. And I got a video to prove it. Okay, so <laughs> I, got a, I got an email from uh, Madeline. Oh, the other thing that I, I think this rider could do, I like where you said um, a two point position, I would put this rider in two point position and do exercises to help her feel her horse up the up, up, down exercise, stand in two point for two beats down for one beat so that she can feel and get the weight down into her feet and two point over trot rails, right. just two point over trot rails and practice, right. practice, uh, put one hand on the reins, one hand on your hip, one hand on the reins, one hand on your lower back to help feel what your lower back is, one hand on the reins, one hand on your knee, doing some things to help so that you can create a, the, a balance. Right. Good point. Good point. Okay. So uh, I'm just seeing, okay, here she is here. I'm just getting, retrieving this. Oh, it's a video. Excellent. Let's see if I can make this bigger. Are you up for doing another video? Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention about this one here, now that I've, I'm looking at my notes here, is thank you so much for sending this in, by the way. Mm -hmm. is, is if you look at this picture, I want to comment on something we didn't mention yet is those jump cups. Right. Did you notice those, Patricia? Yes. Yes, they, they, they need to be removed because yeah. if you fall and knock a rail down, you can easily get hung up on the jump cups. You know, if your horse tosses you to the side, 
just safer not to have them there, even though they're under the other pole, still something could happen. Yeah. Or it could knock the rail out of the way and then you could fall. You know? Or refuse or shy or stumble, okay. or you may lose your stirrup or it may spook. A dog may run out a plastic bag. Who knows? Some, something that you don't ever think will happen. You could see that these jump cups, that that is kind of something that we really look for. And Madeline, if there, if your uh, video uh, is that way too, we're going to mention it as well. The other thing I thought too, Patricia, I don't know if it looked that way for you, is it looks like the ground rail. Yeah, it's kind of, I do that sometimes if you only have one ground rail, rail and you're jumping the jump from both directions, as long as yeah. it's a low jump, you kind of uh, angle it, you know, put it on a little bit of a diagonal rather than having it directly in front or behind the jump. You know, when it's this slow, that doesn't bother me very much, yeah. but definitely as, as you get above cross rails and little bitty fences, you, you, it's always good for your horse, especially a young horse or the hunters to have a ground line in front of the fence. It just helps them jump in better form. So what we really liked about this rider, she's not interfering. She's got a lovely position and safe. Her back, eyes are up, back is flat. Uh, hands are like secure on the neck. Her heels are down really lovely. We'd like for her to open up her elbows, maybe open up her body a little bit. <coughs> and stop her lower leg from swinging back. Mm -hmm. Is exactly. that a good summary? Yeah. Okay, so let's see if we can get Madeline now. I'm going to share screen. Thank you so much, Madeline, for being on top of things and and uh, giving us a chance to look at yours. Let's see if I can get it here. Is it showing? Okay, great. This is Madeline. This is cold. We haven't seen this before. Are you ready? Already, ready. Patricia, what do you see is the jump cups. Oh, jump cups, yeah, on the top. Yeah. Very yeah. dangerous. Yeah, got to get those jump cups off. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. So if you're out there riding... Take the jump cups off. Okay, she's trotting in. Awesome. Oh, look at that cute pony. Is this you riding, Madeline, or is it is it uh, somebody that you know? Awesome. Very cute. Very cute. Again, this rider has nice eyes, good depth in the heel. I like the first fence a lot here. Um, I think in between her horse is getting a little lazy and she's kind of going to her seat to keep him going. And, and then she gets just a little behind at the second fence. Got to get those legs a little bit stronger. I think, yeah, lovely. What a super duper pony. Excellent riding. Love, if you look really closely, you can see. Look at those reins. Can you see yeah, the reins, yeah. how looped they are? Beautiful. Love that. Mm -hmm. No interfering at all. Eyes up, back flat. And, oh, look at this rider. It's kind of like the other one, though, Patricia. Her elbows are starting to come out. So Yeah, her hands are a little low for me, too. Like, I like to see them actually on the cr top of the neck, on the crest, rather than dropping to the side like that. Very easy when your hands drop down like that for the elbows to come out. Right. And her timing is very nice over that. Yeah. You know, trotting up to it. Timing's very nice. But do you see what I'm saying to the second one? She, The horse is being a little lazy. So when she lands, she's starting to push some with her seat. And then she gets a little, okay, a so little behind. Let's see if we can get the second jump. See there how she's kind of sitting and driving a little. And then she's just a little late there with her hands has to really push her seat up to get out of the horse's way. And comes down a little early. It's it's hard to tell on these little on the cross rail so right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. here she's sitting up. Yeah. Right. She closes there a little bit, huh? She kind of gets mm -hmm. left behind. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Just get, just strengthen those legs a little bit. This rider, I'd definitely do exercise again. Riding without stirrups is great for strengthening the leg. Lots of jumping position, lots of transitions, you know, make your horse uh, trot. Three speeds at the trot is what I always tell my rider. Riders, a, a working trot, a lengthening at the trot, and then a collected or slower trot. Just kind of working with the horse. Well, that will sharpen the horse up a little bit and tighten the rider rider's leg as well. I, you know, the other thing that I like about this is the the the, the pony. Like he is oh, so happy cool. to do this work. He's mm -hmm. just picking up a, a trot, trotting in, do a nice little. Uh, Mm -hmm. Three strides in there, cantering mm -hmm. away. His ears are up. He's not uh, changing his pace or his rhythm at all. That's that's a lovely ride. Really like what you're doing there to um, get your your horse your horse going and moving forward. Riding yeah, nice, forward. nice pony has nice form even over those little cross rails. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Okay, so everything's in the right place. She's at a great place for her level, great place for the level. I think just, you know, working a little harder to strengthen that lower leg. And it, it's, it's going to come with time and riding. Totally agree with that. And you're on the right track. Stick with your, your instructor, your coach there. She's doing all the right things. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Really like yeah, that. Very nice. Thanks for sending that in. Yeah. Does anybody have any comments on that, uh, on that rider? Love to hear from uh, what, what is happening there. So uh, in case you're just joining us, I'm talking with Patricia Jellerson, USEF large R judge from Oklahoma. And my name is Laura, and I help people improve their riding and training and understanding of their horses by providing hands-on and now virtual training to produce educated, thinking horse people. Check out my website. I'm going to put it in the comments here. But now we're going to move on to something else. <laughs> I just love that one. <laughs> Want to see it again? Yeah. <laughs> That's you and me. I know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I got this, uh, an email from uh, somebody who is a rewriter. That's what they call themselves. Somebody who used to ride when they were younger and getting back into riding as an adult after they've had children and family and career and now getting back into riding again. So uh, her comment is, okay, so this one says, Rebecca says chestnut gelding or the Caspian type bay mare. Okay, so we'll talk about that a little bit later, Rebecca. Thank you so much. But we are talking, this woman sent me a an email saying that my biggest challenge is probably patience. I'm returning to riding after a long break and getting frustrated that my older body doesn't remember things or move the right way. I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. And That's then I'm it. having to go back to basics and essentially be treated as a beginner, even though once upon a time I was an intermediate rider. So th this is something I think that we're all starting to face a little bit more now that, you know, as you're getting older, I mean, I'm still riding. You still riding, Patricia? No, I stopped about 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah. So I just, bought, I just bought a horse and it's an off the track thoroughbred. I've had maybe 10, 12, 13 rides on him, And, you know, he's, he's, he's got to stand still for me to get my leg. My <laughs> you have to make one of those running <laughs> You know, he's got to stand so I can get bend my knee and put my foot in the stirrup. And and because it, it takes me a, a lot longer to get on, I can't just throw myself up like you know, when right, you're older. Right. So, what can we do to help this rider? Well, I think it's important, like she said, to, to remember to be patient. I, I, I kind of like the idea that her instructor is bringing her back to basics if she's been off that long and just. Remember that starting again, it's always going to move faster than 
your very first time that you learn. So you'll start to pick it up. But I would just concentrate on your communication with your horse. And instead of focusing on, on yourself too much, like how am I progressing? Oh, I'm not as good as I used to be. Just think about the interaction with your horse and working with your horse and, and how you can make the performance better. Yeah, exactly right. And and I think too that it's difficult when we ride at a stable that we do um, compare ourselves to others mm -hmm. and thinking that we're not good enough or that we are subpar and that, you know, why can't I move like those teenagers over there move? And, and I think we just have to face the fact that, you know what, we are older and we're going to have to ride within our bounds and, and move and practice and keep fit and keep in shape so that we can move, move the way that we'd like to move. I know this, this month I've started on uh, January 1st, I've started doing yoga in the morning. Oh yeah. Just to, yeah. Just to help keep, I don't know, keep me supple, keep me stretched, keep me going a little bit more. But there are some exercises that you can do to help you when you're not on the horse to help maintain your riding. And one is the, the really simple standing on the bottom step of your stairs and keep the balls of your feet on the stairs and push the weight down into your heels and think that you're sitting on a horse on the bottom step. So that way it just helps to, to get that muscle memory back of keeping your heels down and keeping, keeping yourself balanced. That's a really good balance thing and a really good stretching thing. It is. I also really recommend those big exercise balls. I think to do some work on those, um, some some crunches and some different things, just to feel that ball under you kind of moving around helps your balance. Crunches. I know it's, it helps me, but I um, I uh, box five times a week. <laughs> <laughs> and does it help? Are you getting fitter? You feel feel better? Oh, yeah, I, I feel like I have a lot of stamina and. Uh, and definitely it helps your core. It, it, it's good cardio. It's great exercise. Okay, excellent. So another exercise you can do is, uh, and for me, I think if you're getting back into riding and if you're finding that you're not able to keep up, make sure that you talk with your instructor or try to get a group if with people of your own level right, and your right. own uh, ability. If you're riding at a riding school where there's maybe a group of women who are having the same sort of thing, so you not comparing yourself to younger people, but you are able to keep up and and ride at the level that you'd like to ride at with people who are at your same level and same age group. That's another thing you can do just to make sure that you know. You know, the, and, and maybe um, invest in some extra lessons, some private lessons. I don't know how often you're riding, but if you ride once a week, it's hard to make progress. It, it really is. I think if you're looking to regain the ground that you had when you were younger, you'll have to to ride more than once a week and maybe fit in a, a private lesson now and then if you're taking groups just uh, to help move things along. Yeah. I'm trying, I, I, I'm looking at my website here uh, where I was looking at some. Uh, Are you finding the yoga helps your riding? Yes. Well, mm. I guess. Yeah, I'm sure it does the stretching and just the stretching and everything. You know, you're just moving your body. And I think what helps is understanding where you are, your proprioception, you know, where your body is, and also the breathing. Re breathing is good. So I have oh, this yeah. ex exercise. It's called Use the Wall. And this is a variation of the stair exercise. So this is the first one is the stirrup stretches you, your stairs at home. Uh, put your foot on that. This is variation. Walk up to any wall in your house and put your foot up against it about half to three quarters of the position it would be in your stirrups. 
Lift your foot up to the position where your foot would be in the stirrup. Hold it for three seconds and then release back against the wall. Okay. Repeat five times. I don't understand how that, what that is and how, what I meant with that. Uh, maybe she's talking about putting the ball of your foot or maybe it's talking about putting the ball of your foot. Oh, I wrote this. Did I wrote this. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote, I wrote, I wrote well, this. I don't send, understand what it means. You'll have to send us a picture and for demonstration next time. Yeah. But I don't know what it means. Okay. So this one is use a beach ball, any rubber plastic ball, Foot in diameter, sit on a hard chair, allows your knees to sit at right angles. Scoot to the edge of your chair so that your thighs are completely off it. Squeeze the beach ball between your knees, hold it for 15 seconds. Okay, so that's putting something, you can even use a pillow for that one. Mm -hmm. But I like your idea. exercise ball when doing uh, sit ups and um, exercises off a beach, of a, a exercise ball. I think that's really good as well. Yeah, great. But I think what what you have to understand is, and you know, I'm I'm in the same boat as this person that I'm, you know, getting older and riding. I I know that I can't ride like I I used to. Oh, <laughs> Wendy says that's another downside of aging, Laura. Is I can't <laughs> remember what I wrote. Yes, I remember. Thanks, Wendy. I'll remember that. Now there's downside. I remember before I stopped, like you said to me, the hardest part was getting on. I mean, that horse had to stand still for me to throw my leg over. I was like very careful about that. I felt once I was on, I was great. But the getting on part was a little dicey. And the getting off part too. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, the getting off part. So, uh, so I think going back to basis, like you say, Patricia mm -hmm. is great. And, um, don't concern yourself with what other people are doing. Just be concerned about what you're doing and your own improvements. So put your blinders on and enjoy what it is that you're doing and focus on your, on, on your abilities and what your goals are, not what other people Absolutely. are doing. Absolutely. And you'll catch up to, you know, like I said, it's a lot easier to pick it back up even in your later years than to never have done it as far as knowing where you're going. Yeah. Uh, does anybody have any other thoughts on, on this, on if about, um, you know, getting, Riding and getting older and how they are, how you are managing your riding as you're getting older or how you feel about riding in group, group lessons with other people. I really encourage group lessons because I think you learn a lot just watching the other participants um, I think going back to the exercising, so important, the older you get to stretch really good before you ride, because I think, you know, our muscles get tight, our joints. For me, I have a lot of arthritis here and there, and uh, I, I think that really makes things easier if you can do some good stretches before you get on. That's really, really great. Okay, so uh, let's go back here to Rebecca. I can't just can't decide on the horse. I've never ridden a chestnut horse before. Well, they all kind of ride the same, Rebecca, no matter what color they are. No matter what color it is. <laughs> yep. I agree. Doesn't matter what color it is, Rebecca. It's so long as it's suitable for what you want to do. If you're looking right, to do right. endurance or going to the Olympics and show jumping, I think it doesn't matter what color of horse you're, you're getting so long as it's sound and suitable for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If you like the color chestnut, well, that's good too. What's your feelings? There are a lot of them out there. <laughs> What's your feelings, uh, Patricia, about chestnut horse? I, I don't have any, you know, a lot of people say, oh, chestnut mare, but you know, that chestnut mare you see a lot in my videos are, a, is a lovely horse. Um, so, you know, other people will say, oh, you don't want a horse where, you, you know, he's got a bad eye or uh, four white thing. socks or whatever. But, I, you know, I try not to, um, I try not to prejudge. Yes. And, 
it so long as the horse is sound, mm -hmm. suitably sound for what you would like to do, the color is is way down on the list for mm -hmm. me as uh, a, something that would stop me from buying a horse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's difficult enough to find a suitable one, I think, for what you want, let alone narrowing your choices by thinking of color. So uh, my chromed out chestnut off the track thoroughbred mare is one of the quietest horses on my property. Yeah. I don't believe a lot of those old wives' tales. No. Nope. So uh, getting back to Rebecca here, Rebecca, what is your concern about the chestnut horse? Is there a gut feeling you're having about this chestnut horse that you don't want to purchase it? Like what, what is it that about the chestnut horse or is it because it's chestnut you would like to, what's your feelings on that? So we're going to let that sit because it's a little bit of a, a leg there. We're going to go on to our next topic. Mm, nice. <laughs> cool, eh? Mm -hmm. Our next topic is uh, answering questions. Okay, so we do have questions that were sent in to me from the my YouTube channel. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for taking the time to ask questions and comment. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. This is from Katie Equestrian. I have yet another question for you. Thank you so much, Katie. We never mind questions. We, we don't mind questions at all. Love questions. I love getting a judge's opinion on things. Thank you. Yes. So my question is about crops and whips. Good. My horse is lazy. We like to call him an opportunist. I use motivators. What are motivators, Patricia? Do you know what motivators are? I'd say motivators are, are, are your aids, you know, uh, spur your artificial aids, excuse me, spurs, crops. Yeah. I just want to know if they were a type of spur. I was wondering if they were those little baby spurs with the little spikes on the inside, the little things on the inside. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Now I've never heard a particular piece of tack called that, but Does anybody out there know what a motivator is? Motive, motive, motivators. I'm just looking it up. Hmm. Let's see. Ah. Yeah, there's the motivators. Okay, so I'm going to show a picture of motivators. He oh, so shows, he's what a type of spur? Yep. Oh, interesting. Chrome tab, motivator spurs. There, can you see that? Oh, yeah, there you go. I haven't seen a pair of those in a long time. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So those are motivator spurs. So Okay, so this... Uh, person uses motivators and a crop with him that's it's one that's about two inches longer than the classic size i wanted to know what are the rules surrounding crops in the hunter ring the only thing i know is that you should never smack on them on the shoulder so basically my question is when can you use a crop over fences under saddle should you even use your crop on your horse or should you just carry it Okay, there's like six questions here. <laughs> Will you get points off? Sorry, this is so long. I always have questions about riding. Thank you so much. I love watching the lives you do. They're so helpful. Thank you so much, Katie. A question. Lovely. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, I wanted to know what are the rules surrounding crops in the hunter ring? Let's do that one first. Well, as a judge, and most of the judges I know feel the same way, you should not. When you're showing, you should not use your crop. It, it is definitely a deduction and, and uh, an important deduction. I mean, if sure, if your horse is about to refuse a jump and you're going to get a score of 40 anyway, use your crop, get the job done. But just so you know, there is a deduction, um, whether you use it on the, on the uh, behind your leg, which is the correct place, 
or someone uses it on the shoulder or someone uses it at the gate. You know, if I see someone using it at the gate, I still think about that because it, it, it all chalks up to your horse's performance and whatever you practice at home, there's certain guidelines and, and rules that we follow at shows that you can't necessarily do the same thing that you do when you school, use the same equipment. I, I like where you say, even at the end gate, you see sometimes people mm -hmm. give the horse a couple smacks at the end gate. Mm -hmm. And that does make a, a reflection on you and your riding and your horse before you step into that ring. So I think it's a good idea if if you have to use your stick to get it done in the warm up ring. Yes, yes, good point. Good point. Right. I mean, the, uh, rather than standing there, and the right. horse, you know, the, you you go, you do your warm up, and then you stand at the in gate. Your horse just switched off. So mm -hmm. don't punish your horse by smacking him. I guess yeah. uh, for thinking of from the horse's point of view, what, you know, why would you do, you spent your 20 minutes or half an hour or whatever it was in the warm up ring, you got everything warmed up and then you park by the end gate and your horse just kind of, you know, he's, he's got a busy day. He's, he just switched off. So thinking from the horse's point of view, don't, uh, I mean, that's kind of an aside from what this is, but yeah. Um, so it is a, a mark off. I know exactly what you say. If you're thinking that your horse is under pace and going to chip in or going to have a refusal, it's it it you've already lost the class because you're going to chip or refuse. So it you kind of switch into training mode and schooling mode at that point and use your stick to get the job done. Yeah, I mean once once the class is kind of blown i mean i totally agree with that it becomes a training situation you know you want to get out of there with the best trip possible under the circumstances and teach your horse something and give them the, the best training experience you can yes exactly okay the only thing i know that you should never smack them on the shoulder yes that is something that you should not do correct well it makes sense if you think behind your leg because what the crop is saying i always tell my students is, is it's reinforcing your leg when you press your leg and you don't get a response or you use your spur and you don't get a response to me you always go up the ladder squeeze first then maybe a little kick then maybe a little spur then maybe a little crop but if you're using it to reinforce your leg and you hit your horse right behind your leg, that's giving them a reminder to listen to your leg. If you hit them on the shoulder, that's really not related to anything. I think if you hit it on the shoulder, maybe your horse might, you know, turn its shoulder mm -hmm. weight, right? Right. Okay, I'm just saving a picture here that uh, uh, Rebecca sent us that we can send. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we're going to show that just a little bit later after we ask this. Okay, so da 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 da. Okay, then we hit the show. Basically, my question is when can you use a crop? When can you use a crop? Use it in the warm up. Don't stand at the end gate and give your horse a smack just before you come in to wake him up. Go to your warm up. That's not fair to the horse. When can you use a crop over fences under saddle? Okay, so what's the rules about under saddle? Same. I mean, you can carry a crop, but you, you just don't want to use it. But I, I, it, there's, to me, there's no deduction carrying a crop in an undersaddle class. No. What about equitation? Same. Yeah. If, you, if, I if, I think if, if I saw a horse, if I saw, I guess, again, it depends on the type of show that you're at, right? If you're at a schooling training show and the and a rider uses the stick because they know the horse is going to break and before the horse breaks, they kind of do some riding. That would be different than if you were at a sanctioned horse show, an A-circuit show, and the horse, the, the rider's using a stick. So there's always a little bit of a ee -ee, uh, when right. to use it and when not to use it. But if, you, if the judge does see you use it, just like your voice, if the judge hears you going... Uh, that's going to be some deductions. Mm -hmm. Will you get points off? Yes, you will get points off. 
So here's I, I looked at our rule book and this is for Equestrian Canada. I looked at our rule book. Oh my goodness, look your rule book. Ours is like 10 times that size. Oh well, this is just the hunter jumper one. Oh, it is. They should do that for us, separated into it's okay. just one huge thing. And I had it here, headgear. Draw reins, athletes. Oh my gosh, I thought I had it right here, but I don't. I, I haven't checked our rules, but I believe it's twenty, no bigger than twenty-four inches. I believe, but I, I would have to check that to make sure. Oh, I can't find it now. You said, um, yeah, seventy-five centimeters. Oh, yeah. there it is here. Okay, so athletes, are you allowed to use a dressage whip on working on the flat only? So dressage whips on the flat only, uh, forbidden to use or carry a whip which is weighted down at the end or one which is more than 75 centimeters in length in the arena. 75 centimeters is uh, 29 inches in schooling areas when riding over poles or any obstacles. So when you're riding on the flat, dressage whip is okay. If you're going over a pole or going over a jump, then you have to use a short stick. No steps, no substitute for a whip may be carried. So that means if your horse isn't going forward and you're riding and there's a, happens to be a hedge there or a tree, you can't snap a branch off the tree and use it for a stick. Although and we, we, we don't do use massage whips at all in, in the hunter shows or the jumper shows. Only you're not allowed to use a dressage? Yeah, no dressage whips for us. On, the, on the flat and in the warm up. You can oh, use anything in the warm-up, sure. Well, not anything. I was going to say you have to be careful because at a lot of the A shows, they have uh, schooling ring supervisors. And if they deem that you are excessively using your stick or your spurs or doing something to, um, to the detriment of your horse, you will get reported for it. So, yeah, so that's a horse welfare. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But uh, so dressage whips on the flat only. As soon as you step over a pole, you're not allowed to wear, use a dressage whip. You have to use a short stick or bat. But in, in our at our shows here in the United States, you can't ever carry a dressage whip in a hunt or jumper show. Perfect. Okay, so uh, let's... Uh, okay, so quickly, Rebecca... Sent in a picture. Where did I put it? Oh, wait a minute now. How do I get to it? Okay, so let's try that. Nope. Okay, one moment, please. Technical issues happen well, sometimes. I'm just trying to figure out how to... How in to this high-tech world. So, uh, yeah, and remember when you use a crop too, there's... I call a crop uh, a longer one. A bat is a shorter one. And if you want to carry one that your horse is not going to see out of the corner of their eye, you want one of those shorter bats, which is definitely what we usually carry in the hunters. And then the, the longer sticks in the jumpers, but not a dressage whip. That's too long. There's the picture of Rebecca's horse. Ah. This is the chestnut that you were looking at. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Is this the one you can't decide on the horse? I've never ridden a chestnut before. So this is your horse that you're thinking about buying. Lovely. I wonder where she's at. Where, If you have a chance, send us where you're at, Rebecca. What part of the country? or What part of the world are you at? What part of the world, yes. Yeah. Two martingales on? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking. So that's why I wondered, you know, certain oh, areas. That's the, range. You know. that's the range and a running martingale. Oh, okay. Right? Yes. Awesome. Okay, Rebecca, thank you so much for that. Let us know where you're coming in from. Looks like a lovely horse. Mm -hmm. Good weight. Nice long neck. Good shoulder. It's hard to see the stance because the back legs are out of the picture. Looks a little, a little long, maybe. Could be the photo angle or the mm -hmm. camera and all this stuff, you know. Yeah. 
He looks cute. What a lovely color. Mm -hmm. I don't mind chestnuts. I love the white markings on his face too. Yeah, it's very cute. He looks very curious. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Now let's get away from that. All right. So, uh, oh my gosh. How well, does that happen, Patricia? <laughs> okay. So I want to show you this. It's uh, from Wildlands Wild Horses, the trailer for Wildlands Wild Horses. And she's going to be a guest February 6th. And I do have it. This is a from YouTube. And I'm going to show it's two minutes. So stay tuned. Horses built this country. There's nothing like watching them sail across the landscape. grandkids can experience what it's like out in the wild west and revel in that moment when a wild horse runs by mesmerized by the sheer power and beauty because if they're not here anymore we lost a direct link to our heritage our history and everything else that comes with it so come with debbie carson and i two wild horse photographers looking to make a difference as we take you through the Wild West and show you the world of our beautiful American icon, the Wild Horse. Nice. I'm Isn't that fantastic? So I, I contacted... Um, Contacted them and Jamie Baldanza, I think that's her name, Baldanza is coming on our program February 6th. And she's the photographer and videographer on that on that uh, little trailer that we saw. She's got a docu-series that she is going to be releasing soon. And uh, she's going to come in and talk about the wild horses. So I invite you all to come to for that. Also on January 30th, we have uh, Tammy Lavasseur certified bit fitter and offers equine bit fitting clinics and she's going to be our guest on january 30th so i invite you all for that as well and then january 23rd crystal kelly international equestrian she is hosting an international virtual equestrian summit and she's going to be our guest on the 23rd so any questions any last words, Patricia? Just uh, touching on something you said earlier, don't try not to compare yourself to other people when you ride. Just think of your personal progress. Keep a journal if you need to, but stop watching other people except to learn, not to judge. Right. And you usually say something else too. And practice. Practice what we talk about at home. Practice, yes. practice. So you don't try to do anything that you haven't already practiced at home. Right. Don't go to, a, don't do at a horse show what you haven't practiced at home. Right. And if you would like to have your position reviewed, send us an email, thistleridge at hotmail.com. And uh, we'll do our best to answer your questions. And now go use this stuff and go hug your horse. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Let's see what else I got here.
<laughs> I just do that to make you laugh, Patricia. Thanks, Mel. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.